Welcome in all you sexy sharks and sharkettes. I'm here with the sexiest man in Scotland, Abel the Mad Dog Magwitch, TWO for life. And if you don't know, now you know. Abel Mad Dog, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing very well, thanks, Teal. Looking I'm handsome as fuck, bro. You ready to you ready to do this? I'm ready. You ready to answer these? The people want to know. A couple questions for you. Uh, Mad Dog, the first one I'm going to ask you, it's a pretty, it's a softball. I'll be a little softball here, get us going. But if you pick a fight with any wrestler that you had to win, that you guarantee you had to win, I'm not talking scripted. I'm not talking a worked match. What wrestler is Mad Dog Magwitch picking a fight with if he knows his life depends on winning? Um, Probably... Maybe the Brooklyn Brawler, because he never won any matches. <laughs> You're going with the with the statistics here? Yeah, going, the ultimate jobber. I'm going with, uh, I thought you were going to say some shit like Brock Lesnar. I thought you were going to be like, I'm going for an easy one, easy dub for the mad dog. Let's just get Brock in there. You know what I no, mean? No, no, man, he, he, would, he would kill me. <laughs> Brock Lesnar, I don't know if you know this, but... I don't think he takes a punch very well. I watched him in the UFC. And don't tell... I, he, if he's listening, <clears throat> Magwitch said that first. But he doesn't take a punch <laughs> punch very well. I know that to be true. Um, so, since we said Brock Lesnar, it brings me to my next question. Who is the most overrated wrestler that you can think of? What, today or all time? Let's talk... Yeah. Let's talk about today, right now. Um, I know it's not going to be that... I don't know. I don't know how this one's gonna go, but I think um, John Moxley's pretty overrated. I, I'm just not. I mean, I get that he's he's a good good worker and a good hand, and he's he's bailed AEW out a bit recently mm. with the whole Punk getting injured and being an idiot and stuff. But um, I don't know. I just. I gotta yeah, be honest. Mo- I'm not a John Moxley fan either. I'm not a John Moxley fan either. I I don't get it, and I and. I'm with you on that. I think he's worked really hard, but I think he's been selling the whole gimmick that he's a real hard worker for a long time. He's not hes not exciting to me. You know what I mean? I'm just not a fan of his promos either. I just mm-hmm. Every time he talks, I just see, like, um, Ultimate Warrior or, like, Scott Steiner or something like that that was terrible with promos and just yeah. shouted a lot. So He's cheesy as fuck. That's, that's honestly the way I would say it. I think Moxley is, is very, very cheesy. And I think that people that like him, they have to kind of get past that. And it's like a cult following that he, like, the stuff he's doing for uh, AEW to try to make another brand other than WWE, I respect that. But I, I just don't like him as a wrestler. I don't like really much about him. So I agree. Very overrated. John Moxley. Um... By the uh, same same concept, who is the most underrated wrestler? Who is Mad Dog Magwitch? Like, how the fuck do people not love this guy or or girl? Um, so I was when I was watching Clash at the Castle mm-hmm. uh, the other week, it actually popped into my head that I'd say Sheamus has became quite underrated recently. Um, I know he's had a lot of success in WWE and he's been like world champion and stuff in the past, but he actually can make pretty much anything work, I reckon. Like, they've, they've put him with, like, Cesaro and stuff in the past, and mm-hmm. obviously he's doing this thing with, with Pete Dunne and yeah. that Rich Holland, and it's just a cheesy Peaky Blinders type thing, but... But he makes it better. He makes it better. And the thing with, with, with Walter or Gunther, or whatever they're calling him at the moment, <laughs> um, he'll always be Walter to me, and yeah. I've known him as Walter. Yeah. Um, there was no build to that match, and that was the best match on the card. And those two, they made it work. They made it look brutal. They didn't have to resort to, like, um, like bleeding. I know Sheamus' chest was all kind of beat up and yeah. he was bleeding that way. But they didn't have to resort to just, like, cutting their face open after five minutes to make it look brutal. It, it actually was a really good match. So I'd say at the moment, I'd say he, I'd say a lot of people are sleeping on him just because he's been around for so long and yeah. um, he's maybe not at the top of the card. But, yeah. Yeah, I agree in a lot of ways because, like you said, it's one thing. Anybody you give him, he makes he makes it work a little bit better. And that the uh, the match with Gunther Walter Walter Gunther, sir, uh, yeah, that guy. The match with him. Not only did they not go to use color or anything like that, they didn't bleed, they didn't do gimmicky stuff. But there was no like extra cheesy like you know fan involvement or stacking seven ladders on somebody etc because they both like i said sheamus is is a stud he's gonna make it even if he knows he's losing the match 
it was a great, great, great physical match. And I honestly, I think part of seeing people as underrated is when that match was said, I think we all thought for sure that Walter was going to win it. But in your mind, enough of it was like, it's possible that they'll give it to Sheamus at Clash at the Castle. And that's kind of an ode to exactly what you're saying is that you can see him doing anything. You know what I mean? So, absolutely. I, I really like Sheamus. Uh, when New Year's Day happens, all right, everybody's going to be happy. People are going to be hung over, this, that, and the other. Is the island of relevancy still going to have Roman Reigns as a champion New Year's Day? Well, the fact that he didn't lose it at Clash of the Castle kind of surprised me because I actually thought they were building it for Drew, Drew to win it. Um, <laughs> I thought that was kind of like the what they were going with that. Um, the fact he didn't lose it there, yeah, I think he's gonna. I think it'll be either the Royal Rumble or WrestleMania next year that he'll he'll actually lose it. And then I think, I think after that, I could see Roman going off to like Hollywood or something after Doing that. Doing some things like that. And my whole thing is when people talk about him going to Hollywood, I understand that that's an ideal, but. I almost feel like he can do like three more years of wrestling and then just be done with it all together instead of kind of go into Hollywood and come back. Because as an age thing, I feel like he's learned from some guys before him in the sense of wait till your wrestling career is kind of done and then just give everything to Hollywood. You know, Either way, either way, I think he'll take a break, like a proper break. I know he's not really been on TV as much recently, but yeah. I think that's more from a booking standpoint of they haven't really built up enough kind of talk legitimate threats to him yet for like, real. i mean he's he's beat everyone pretty <laughs> much and he, he's beaten a few few of the same people twice mm-hmm. and obviously that's part of the gimmick of him being the tribal chief but um if he was to lose like the title and like either the rumble or mania next year i think he just goes away for a period of time and he comes back and his character's refreshed and it's something different and you'd really um, love to see him come back at that point a lot of people like whether you yeah. like him or not the whole like leaving for a little bit and then not knowing when they come yeah. back is. Uh, I I think, I mean this I I really don't know where they're going because obviously things have changed with Triple H coming in and mm-hmm. Vince leaving and stuff. But I think the way the way I see it is, and this is just my opinion, is I think Cody comes back at the Rumble, and I think he wins the Rumble and then he's the one that that beats Roman at Mania. Yeah, and I think you're right. And honestly, Mrs. Teal and I have been talking about it, and I just, I, I hate to say it because, I, you know, John Moxley, we talked about it. I just can't with Cody Rhodes. I don't know, man. Like, I, I like it. I like a lot of it. And it's not cheesy because, I, I, you know, I think the problem is, is that when he came into the WWE, I didn't know as much about him. And they gave him, like, two hours of talking time for the first, like, fucking two months that he was there. And it was like, that's cool. And the whole, like, thing with Seth Rollins, I respect a lot. I just, I'm just like you. I'm honest about, like, dudes that I can root for and dudes that I can't. I'm neutral on Cody Rhodes. And I just, if he takes Roman Reigns' belt, I'm kind of going to be like, damn. I feel like that was, uh, like, forced. Forced is the word, I guess. I think the thing with Cody is, though, they can have him win the belt as a face. Mm -hmm. But then they can very quickly turn him heel because he's a natural heel. And the thing... The thing that wasn't working for him in AEW was because it was him and the Bucks that started the company, he decided he was never going to win the world title. Mm-hmm. And then he decided he didn't want to be a heel. But the fans were dying for him to become a heel before he left. Yeah. So I think I think he's Cody's a natural heel, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So I agree. I think you have him win the belt, maybe maybe retain it as a month as a face. Mm-hmm. But then, then you turn them heel and, and then piss everybody off. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and then and then there'll be more kind of people that are believable to beat him. Yeah. than there is at the moment with to Roman. beat Roman. Yeah, so he'll basically be the guy that comes in and and adopts the belt while Roman takes his break, for lack of a better term, I think. Because um, I don't like I see Braun Strowman and these guys. Like my whole thing is I know Braun's a monster, but I don't have any any want to really see Braun Strowman against Roman Reigns and it's not really any political thing I just don't Braun Strowman even even when he was there these two weeks he's like when he's walking in the promos he's like got like a gate to his walk and stuff he's just a big non-athletic dude in my opinion like I don't yeah, know yeah, he's, he's Braun's just not for me yeah. I've, I've kind of I've said that on your 
on your stream in the chat before. Yeah. Not for me, not a fan of his politics, not really a fan of him as a wrestler. Yeah. I mean, they overdid it last time with him tipping over like ambulances and, and yeah. fire truck, God knows what else. Mm-hmm. Um, I was kind of glad when he was gone. Yeah, at some point, that's still the remnants of Vince McMahon's WWE, where everybody's supposed to be seven foot tall and, and 500 pounds. And, and I don't, like I said, it's good for him to be back in some ways, like as far as like just to be antagonistic. But I think there's so many people that could have got that push that would have been better, in my opinion. Um, but well, yeah. well, well, they've got the, oh, I forget his name, the guy on. NXT, the um, the Steiner's son, um, oh, Braun Breaker. Uh, yeah, Braun Breaker, yeah. We've got him. Just have him come up and be the big, strong guy. Yeah, right? And the thing is, I think I think that's what everybody talks about, but if you put them side by side, Braun Breaker looks like the dude that's, like, maxing himself out with steroids, and Braun Strowman looks like whether he did or didn't do steroids, he'd be, fu- he'd be a fucking problem. You know what I yeah. mean? So, Braun Breaker, I, I don't know. I like Braun Breaker. I like the way he wrestles and everything, but I feel like He's not that intimidating, you know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe that's the problem. And I think, I think when they bring him up, they've got to change his name to Steiner. Yeah, they've got to change. It to Steiner Just like straight up, Steiner would be a sweet ass name. Just Steiner, right? Even if it's not everyone, Braun Steiner. Everyone knows who his dad and his uncle is. Do you know what I mean? So just make him Steiner. Yeah, stop the dumb shit. Stop the Walter Gunther dumb shit. We're not dumb, you know. Um, but based on some of the questions I was asking you as far as like showing up and Cody turning heel and this, that, and the other, um, they're waiting to do a lot of these things. They're kind of holding their, uh, their cards in their sleeve, if you will. But the number one question that I got to ask you that everybody talks about with wrestling right now is what's going on with the fiend. The question is, will we actually see the fiend? And honestly, personally, why do you think we haven't? And and, why haven't we seen the fiend? And I, I really don't know because I feel like I feel like uh, he's been teasing coming back mm-hmm. and when he left I kind of thought he was going to turn up somewhere like um, I didn't think he would go to AEW because I didn't think it would work yeah. um, there. You've been like saying was... that for a while about because yeah, some people were saying he should go to AEW but I talked to you about this a while ago and you were saying that he would get lost in their roster. He... He would, because they've got too many people as it is right now, and mm-hmm. like even people like um, Alistair Black, they were doing the kind of supernatural thing with him with the House of Black, but yeah, that hasn't really worked either. Yeah. Um, the only place I kind of thought it would maybe work, and that was because they kind of gave Matt Hardy a free reign at the time, was in Impact because they let him like cut like these weird videos with like his um like his drone like Vanguard One and. Yeah. all this like weird supernatural stuff but they gave him time to get, actually get it over and it mm-hmm. felt like a big deal in that promotion so I thought he'd maybe he, he would have went there when he first initially got released but yeah. um, I don't know with, 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 with Triple H in charge I could see Triple H bringing him back because I think I do think Triple H liked um, Bray um, didn't he help back. him with his uh, gimmick at NXT or whatnot? Or, or I'm sorry yeah I'm pretty yeah, sure they said that Triple H helped Bray Wyatt with some of the with one of the gimmicks or so. Yeah, as far as I'm aware, I think it was like obviously the the Wyatt family one in mm-hmm. the NXT. But whether he comes back as the Fiend as such, I don't know. But yeah, and I, I hope I hope he comes back to wrestling because I think he's a really talented guy. But he was never really put in a put in a position where he was like like a top guy they, they, they squandered so many things with him and it was it was a shame that he's first yeah. like the way it kind of ended with the fiend because they could have something really special there but they just made it so gimmicky and so stupid at times yeah they made him a high level gatekeeper is what happened too like he would they, they gave him matches that were good matches but it was almost in my opinion it was like you could almost tell the ones they were going to have him lose before the match even started and i think that was heavy because when he went from Bray Wyatt to The Fiend, some people saw it as just a gimmick. Um, my thing is, I haven't seen The Fiend do a lot of wrestling. I've seen Bray Wyatt do some really cool wrestling. I love Sister Abigail, all that. Um, but I think when a dude is so fucking polarizing as The Fiend, it almost doesn't matter how he wrestles. And that's that's it's a, it's good that he, that he can, but it doesn't make sense to me business-wise when you have a guy that is so polarizing. Like People are going to tune in every week just to see what the fiend's doing like even if it's a five minute segment or a half hour segment so i don't know if they're just waiting to like almost like for a super bowl like moment uh for like you know wrestlemania or a royal rumble 
But if he doesn't come back, it's it seems like it's almost going to start to lose some of its – it's fizzling out to me because every time I think he's coming back, he doesn't. And I'm kind of yeah. like, fuck it. I'm not going to worry about it anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, but the thing is, they could maybe hold him off till next year as well. Mm-hmm. And then he could be a surprise at the Rumble or he could appear at Mania and be the one that takes out Cody after Cody wins the belt. That'd be sick. That'd be pretty sick to have him then. So, yeah, maybe maybe he's almost – maybe him sitting on the sideline is a product of the fact that anything he comes back to do is going to be amazing. So they almost don't want to waste him for something, I guess. I don't know. I'm trying to make sense out of him not being there every week. It's pissing me off. <laughs> you know. Uh Abel Mad Dog Magwitch. What we're going to do now is we have some hockey terms and we're going to read off. I got about six of them for you. We're going to read them off and you're going to let me know uh, what these hockey terms are. So this is our first ever segment doing a segment called What You Know About That. And I purposely am asking a gentleman who is into wrestling he was into football, not soccer, Americans. All right? It's not soccer. It's football. I got this for you. I got this for you. Um, we're going to ask him some questions about the beautiful sport of hockey. So, Mad Dog Magwitch, are you ready to tell me what these terms are? I'll give it my best shot. All right. The first one in hockey, and these are real hockey terms, whether you believe that or not. Uh, the first one is hooking. What is hooking? Um... I'm going to guess it's something to do with the, the hockey stick and either you hook a shot with a, with a puck or is it if you like obstruct an opponent by catching them with it? Yes, you are 100% right on the second part. Hooking is if you take your hockey stick and you obstruct a player's movement by literally like hooking their leg, hooking them at the hip, arm, anywhere. So Mad Dog Magwitch. You're one for one. All right, that's a TWO shirt that's off. That's that helped right there. I can tell. TWO baby. All right, what is an apple? In hockey apple. terms, an apple. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm maybe thinking this a little too literally, but I'm thinking maybe if you slice a shot, you just slice an apple. I don't know. That's a very good. Uh, that's a good guess. An apple is also known as an assist. And it's only because it's the A. So every time you get an assist, that means you're getting an apple. Uh, one of the one of the slang terms that a lot of hockey players like to use, it's one of the favorite amongst the boys, and it's a term. I'll spell this one for you, and then I'll say it. But it's F-E-R-D-A, and it's FERDA. Abel Mad Dog Magwitch from Scotland, sir. What is FERDA to you? FERDA. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I don't know. Is that something to do with when they get into a fight? <clears throat> Would you like me to use it in a sentence? Yeah, sure. Like a spelling bee. <laughs> I'll use it in a sentence. Mad Dog Magwitch is here for the boys. Oh, um, part of the team, like all for it. Yeah, like, for the. It just basically means for the but it's been minimized down to when if you're getting in a fight or you're standing up for somebody or if you're playing hockey, it's FERDA, mm. you know, standing up for your team. So I don't know if I'm is giving that, you a point on that, but there's no point system. Is that like a – is that like or, or originate from like Canada? Cause that sounds good. I believe, it, it, yes, it does. So, But I want you, next time you're watching football and somebody scores an amazing uh, bicycle kick, I want you to jump up and say, FERDA! For the boys. Okay. And then everybody in Scotland will be like, I don't know what the fuck you said. And you just explain it to them at that point. You know what I mean? And then you'll they'll think you're as weird as I am. And it'll be we'll be working oh, they towards think, them. They, they think that already. It's fine. Ah, that's, they're, they're correct. <laughs> uh, all right. Let me, let me ask you. Here's another one. This is a hockey term. I promise. Able Mad Dog Magwitch, your second to last term is dangle. What does it mean in hockey terms to dangle? <laughs> um, is it when is it when they um going at halftime and use their washcloths? 
<laughs> uh, no, dangle does not mean rub your balls in the washcloth. That's called teal sharking. That's called breaching around here, all right? Just, um, no, dangle is basically if you have a guy in that's going through the whole team with his moves, just he's got the puck on a string. He's making moves through everybody. That's him dangling. Like, if you're watching uh, football and somebody nutmegs somebody and then goes around him and just abuses him, he dangled him. Ah, so, right, okay. Yeah, so... And a lot of times that term comes from in hockey, what they do is they hold, they dangle the puck out like they're going to shoot it. And then a guy mm-hmm. steps up and they go around him real quick and make him look stupid. So don't get dangled. You don't. And you got to protect the angle of the dangle. And also, it's very rude of you to bring a washcloth in this, in this public manner, sir. We'll, we'll have a, st- we're going to have a whole segment on washcloths one of these days here pretty soon. All right. So this one is one that I think you can start using for people. I'm going to ask you to use this term uh, in your daily life. But Abel Mad Dog Magwitch, what is it when you call somebody 10-ply? 10-ply. Uh, is that like their, their wooden, their, their, their movement slow, something like that? That's a good guess, but 10-ply means they're soft as 10-ply toilet paper. Ah, yeah, so okay. you got to start when somebody takes dives in football, you'll probably be saying it a lot, uh, but you got to start saying, hey, that guy's 10 ply. I'm sure it'll catch <laughs> on in <laughs> that one. <laughs> you can wipe your ass with that guy. He's 10 ply. He'll, they'll, they'll love it. I promise. Um, Magwitch, I want to thank you very much for your time. My last question is I want to know what you got going on on your stream, what's going on in the GEW, and uh, take a couple minutes, talk about yourself. Uh, no worries. Um, yeah, so I've just came back after a month. I t- kind of took a month's hiatus. wasn't planned. Um, some kind of personal stuff happened, and then uh, just didn't kind of kind of feel like streaming for a bit. But mm-hmm. I kinda did did a stream last night. Uh, just like decided to put all the titles on the line. Um, fortunately, it was a bad night for the Mad Dog. Lost the the undisputed title to Floki. Unfortunately, the the TWO lost the trios titles to um, the United Kingdom, which was which was rubbish. So yeah, not a good night. But um, yeah, try and stream once, maybe twice a week. Um, and I'm looking to kind of integrate some new stuff into the stream. But yeah, that's Hell it. Yeah. And, uh, it's uh, it's open to all. It's a promotion that's open to all, pretty much like yourself, uh, Teal. We don't discriminate. I, I don't abide racism, homophobia, anything like that. So anybody like that is is out. Do you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, uh, Twitch TV forward slash Abel Magwitch eighty nine. That's where you can find him, and you better give him a follow. Go ahead and subscribe. Do all that, and get there. Make sure you ask him some questions about wrestling. Abel Mad Dog Magwitch, you are my first ever interview, my first ever guest, and I want to thank you very very much for your time. You're awesome as always, and that shirt. That shirt is pretty mint, bro. That's pretty mint. TWO for life. I'm going to get off this call and uh, bet on God, I'm going to go order a GEW one. If I don't, you tell everybody because I'm going to order it right now. (laughs) Love you, brother. Thank you for the interview. I hope you have a great day. Thank you, too. See you later, buddy.